So I've had this video from Business Session that made me absolutely hilariously laugh as I saw this earlier today. So this is a clip taken from a recent appearance from from a DJ called what's his name? Called Anurag. Anurag, right? Anurag. Anurag Anurag. Uh, recently appeared on Boiler Room and decided to use his appearance on Boiler Room as an opportunity to speak for the issues he has with the platform in general and issues I've seen kind of been spoken about recently um, more often on Twitter and spaces where, you know amongst the techno Twitter crowd regarding Boiler Room and how they treat artists and DJs who come and perform on their platform and something I've, again I've only heard really spoken about in loud voices in the last year or so but I didn't really hear about much of it beforehand but the interesting thing to do right at the end of his DJ set that he's playing in this venue wherever he may be so big up Anurag for what he had to say let's play and put it up on the screen so you can hear i just wanted to ask you all some questions i think this is a really important cultural thing that we do that we gather and we dance um yeah do you all think this is important what we do coming together to do things like this also anybody in the chat feel free to answer all right i've got a question do you think it's important for artists to get paid for their work Everyone here is on the same page with that, and I think myself and all the other artists who are playing got a really generous fee, which is wonderful. Um, another question: Do you think exposure is an important, is an appropriate way to far pay artists for their work? A lot of no's in the crowd. Anything from the chat? Natalia Newling asks for a wave. What's up? Well, from 2012 to 2020, Boiler Room had a track record of not really paying artists. In mid-2020, they started to change that and paid everybody for all their shows, including this one. Um, but it's really important to think about who these corporations are owned by, that Boiler Room is literally owned by the elite of the elite, by venture capitalists, and by, you know, very rich, you know, young white entrepreneurs. And that, ultimately, they're the people who benefit from situations like this. So, I felt really good. When I was asked to play this. I so if you haven't heard he's basically speaking about um this issue that people have been speaking about more often regarding boiler room and the practice of not paying djs they'd pay them with exposure and this happens a lot in the creative field it's not just exclusive to djing this happens in writing happens in photography happens in design happens just being an influencer just doing any kind of content work sometimes if you're on the come up and there's a platform that has a lot of um, cultural relevancy they have a lot of clout they have a lot of you know popularity behind them people view and follow them because you want to get in front of that audience, because you want to have the ability to maybe use that one opportunity to give you opportunity to get to the next level that you want to get to, you'll sometimes do work for the exposure, sometimes for the look, for the association. And it can be handy in the beginning, it really can. I know for me, being a kind of, you know, um, what would you call it? Being a short article writer for places like Hypebeast and wherever it is back in the day it was quite handy to do those first posts and stuff for free because doing those first posts for free that I did allowed me to then go and use that work to kind of get me more work in places like Sneak and Use and other places I was writing for for a short period of time while I was in uni trying to make some extra money and then when Hypebeast did end up making more money they ended up then started to pay us I think at the time when I was at Hypebeast they were paying us like 30 to 50 dollars per article or something like that so basically the more articles you, pay, you writ the more money you was able to make and big up Kevin Ma for just holding us all down and really being upfront and honest about the situation and what we could do in terms of going forward in terms of making the most and obviously covering all the important culture news and streetwear and beyond so it was pretty cool but the boiler room situation I've kind of been I'm always a little bit iffy about some of the criticism because for the longest time it was the only platform the only kind of premier live streaming platform for djs now there's many many out there right there's keep hush there's um horvis in berlin that i hope to get onto one day there's um there's one that i know of as well from a record store in london that's pretty popular people are doing there's many many platforms and of course if you want to also there's also opportunity if you're a dj coming up you can always book a room in pirate studios and live stream yourself off your phone from a webcam like i do whatever you may 
maybe. So there's loads of opportunities now. But back in the day when Boiler Room first started, I was one of the people that kind of went to the first Boiler Rooms that they did. I think that might have been like Pickle Factory back in the day in Shoreditch, if you know, you know. And, um, you know, they had just had like a fucking towel on the back of the wall or something or a flag. It was filmed on a crappy webcam, one kind of angle, no multiple shots um, in really dingy looking places. And for the most part, it was seen as opportunity to just get in front of more people. It was never seen as this is a gig. It was never seen as, okay, you need to get paid for this. It was more so, okay, they've got a platform. They've got people that watch it. It's getting brand sponsorship and stuff. But most of the reason why we thought that didn't make sense to pay was because at the time it was small. And that brand sponsorship you thought was pay, paying for the fucking venue, paying for the staff, paying for the security guards, whatever maybe the running of the event. Obviously, when it started to get more popular and it started to get actual corporate sponsorship like Ray-Ban and alcohol beverage sponsors and shit, I didn't understand this whole premise around it being just a look anymore because they're clearly getting sponsored to do like stages and do the programming for festivals or do the programming for nightclubs or they kind of got like a weird agency that's not really an agency and you know people are doing content for them they're using it and it's all these different things are happening you know the, the revenue ever you get from YouTube all this sort of stuff is really strange so I never understood why that, why they didn't get paid in the first place because obviously they're making enough money to do get paid but I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that no one was really putting pressure on them especially in public like i said before there's a real lack of bravery a, lo- a real lack of cojones in the industry people don't talk about stuff because basically when it comes to clout and when it comes to industry things you don't want to burn a bridge so no one's willing to step out at the peak of uh, at the peak of uh, the peak of boiler room and say hey this practice is awful and it's disgusting and it takes advantage and exploits artists i'm going to speak up about it publicly even if it means it might jeopardize my opportunity to get back on the show or to get back on the channel. I'm going to speak up for it because I want to make sure other people don't go through what I went through. Speak about it and then it changes. But people are not brave enough. So the people were just quiet. DJs and artists didn't speak about it that often or maybe it was spoken about in hushed terms. You know, I see people using asterisks to talk about Boiler Room on their social media. They don't want to get trolled or whatever, maybe, or whatever, right? And then it kind of spirals into this situation where, you know, it kind of goes on for way longer than it probably should because this kid mentioned that it was from 2012 to 2020 that they did it. So only recently, only two years ago, they stopped the practice of not paying people. And imagine what Boiler Room was two years ago. It was still as big as it was now. It was still breaking people's careers. It was still getting sponsored and flew out to different places and whatnot. So the fact that they weren't paying people just shows that it's them being scumbags and doing a Dana White and basically not kind of respecting artists and their work as opposed to, um, anything else but you also can know that because they're very much a i guess social media platform they're obviously they they kind of yeah, i feel like respond to those kind of things well no well not well they respond to those things any negative press they usually kind of go a lot go out of their way to try to make sure to correct it so if someone would have spoken up earlier they could have changed this much sooner but it took a while and it eventually did change, whether or not it changed because they wanted to change it internally or because of the pressure of DJs, who knows. But it's good to hear them talk about it. The only thing that's a little bit funny about this is that if you were a raver at this event, this is a real vibe killer. It's obviously a good thing that he did it right at the end of his set. You know, he respected his audience enough and he's enough of a pro, this person, to do it actually at the end of the set when he's kind of done and wrapped up or whatnot. But imagine being off your face on whatever and then hearing this guy try to articulate a pretty um, a pretty kind of interesting and nuanced point about Boiler Room and about how they treat artists to an audience of people who just want to rave. And I long believe, I think someone said it before, oh, online, so I heard someone say something like, the fans should be demanding more from these platforms. I think that's really entitled, really kind of um, entitled, arrogant, and just really lacking in self-awareness to expect punters who go out to these places, pay their money to go and rave, to fight and to kind of um, champion and to kind of uh, get them or protest for the rights of artists. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Um, you're not going to get fans to boycott anything or anywhere, whatever it may be. Maybe fans of you, not fans of the overall platform. doesn't really make any sense. So this is something that artists should be fighting for off their own backs. But a lot of artists are self-absorbed. A lot of artists are self, self-involved. So maybe some of them did get paid. Some of them didn't get paid. And the ones that did get paid didn't care about the ones that didn't get paid. Simple as that. But then I guess it got to a point where everybody wasn't getting paid. And then finally they spoke up and now it's changed. So at least it's changed down there paying people but it would have been nice if they would have spoken up beforehand but that aside big up a new rag because his set is still online the one that he spoke about where he's kind of ranting at the end is still online here and the rant is for a lot longer than that clip is i think it looks like it goes on for about two minutes and it's still online too on the bottom of the website so this is an absolute boss move he's got balls of absolute steel 
that he would do that um, especially knowing he's in the actual party to do that knowing you're going to piss people off someone might boo they might throw a fucking restaurant at the back of your head and he still does it so that clearly shows that this guy has big balls has morals has principles and you know despite him getting paid and maybe he doesn't know you know there's a threat of always someone docking your pay or whatever it may be or this really setting you back in your career he didn't care he said it anyway and for sure this will end up benefiting loads of people coming up um to end up doing this next people like myself who haven't been on there yet will end up kind of you know um reaping the rewards of this because it means you'll be dealt with in a professional manner and you'll get paid and it won't be that much of an issue so big up a new rag big up a new rag big up a new rag <laughs>